All right, Pippa Capri, how's it going? Oh, man, it's all good, man. That's what's up, man. You know, I see you doing your thing, checked out your music. You know, you've been grinding. Mm-hmm. Staying at it like a crack addict with a bad habit, you feel me? There you go. That's what's up, man. Well, we'll get to know you a little bit better. You know, that's usually what my interviews are about, at least for the first time. Right, 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 right. Somebody right. is, uh, you know, kind of getting into their story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to know them a little bit better. So where are you out of? I'm out of South Richmond, California, Bay Area. Bay Area, home of, you know, a lot of... A lot of shit, man. You a feel lot me? Of shit. <laughs> a whole lot of A lot of game, you know what I'm saying? A whole lot of money, a whole lot of everything, you feel me? You know, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing place on earth like the Bay Area, man. You feel me? That's like a whole... You could take the Bay and just make it a whole state itself. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of stuff comes from the Bay. A lot of styles, right. you know, a lot of... A lot of things, you know, people will take vocabulary, like a little, all that shit. Vocabulary, little pieces here right, and there. Right. But, you know, the hip hop, it, 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 Bay has been huge influence right. on hip hop throughout the years. What's it like, you know, hip hop wise, growing up and you know, seeing like, you know, like stuff being popular for a while, and then all of a sudden it just like transforms into something else. I mean, things come, things, you know, revolve. It comes back around. You know what I'm saying? Um, Think about the Bay Area. You know, the Bay Area is like. Like you said, originators of, of, of trends and, and, and things that are going on. It's a lot of people, especially in this music, that try to um, emulate the Bay, try to copy Bay Area style, Bay Area words, you know, Bay Area uh, swag, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying. Um, I mean, that's cool, you know what I'm saying, we appreciate that and everything, you feel me? There's nothing wrong with being yourself, though, <laughs> you know. But yeah, you know what I'm saying, the Bay didn't, didn't, didn't really start, especially with this independent music, you know what I'm saying? The Bay Area was really the originators is independent music game. You know what I mean? We got Two, uh, uh, two Short, E-40, uh, uh, Master P, you know what I'm saying, was out there, man. So it's like a lot of that shit that we doing now started back then. That's why you don't find too many Bay Area cats that signed to a label, to a major label, because like the Bay is the home of independent artists, pretty much, you know what I mean? So it's just like we got to keep pushing on the grind, you know what I'm saying? And you know, if a label catch up, they catch up. They don't, they don't. Yeah, I've noticed that in the Bay, you guys really fuck with each other's music. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, other areas, they might fuck with different rappers from different areas right. and, you know what I'm saying, all that. But I know, like, the Bay is like, they love the Bay. Right, 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 right. You know? I mean, it's, it's, it's certain cats out there that I listen to. Like I say, man, uh, I don't really listen to these rap cats like that. You feel me? But it is certain artists that I do listen to, that I do have on repeat, you feel me? Um, so if I like them, you know what I'm saying, I'll play them on my Spotify or something like that, you feel me? Um, but that's about it. It's like I say, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a handful because I don't listen to everybody's shit because I'm not trying to hear what everybody's talking about because half of what everybody talking about is bullshit, cap, and lies anyway, so I don't want to hear that shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's hard for people to really spit some shit when people know you. It's a lot of fake shit going around, so even your partners that know better than what you're saying still gonna make it seem like you telling the truth just to keep your buzz up or to get your buzz up. You dig know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a lot of hot shit coming out the Bay. You know what I mean? It's a lot of hot shit coming out the Bay. And everybody got their own styles. You got different styles in the Bay. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the Bay music. It's not like Bay music. We got a, a whole different type of sound. You feel me? So it's like you got other cats that come with that Bay sound. You got a lot of producers that's emulating that bass sound, you know what I'm saying? Because they're attracted to it, you feel me? So it's like, yeah, the Bay Area, man, is like been like the, the stepping stone, the foundation, you know what I'm saying, for a lot of stuff that's been going on lately. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, I've, I mean, just throughout the years of hip hop, you know, from Two Shorts Biatch right. to, you know, even Mustard coming up and, uh, you know, him kind of getting some of his style from the Bay and right. kind of taking it and, Doing his own thing with it to, right. uh, you know. Well, that's where people come to learn at, man. That's where people come to learn at, man. You know what I'm saying? All these cats come to the Bay. All these industry cats, they didn't been to the Bay. They didn't soaked up the game out the Bay. They didn't hooked up with the big players in the Bay. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they get love in the Bay. So it's like, especially if they, they street rappers. If they claim to be street rappers, they didn't been to the Bay. You feel me? So, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of influence, you know what I'm saying, that come up out of there. Definitely, definitely. Well, we'll get to know you a little bit better. 
You know, uh, get what it was like for you growing up, uh, being from Richmond and everything, man. Uh, what was it like for you growing up? I was cool, man. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't complain. You feel me? Um, got a lot of game. You know what I mean? Just uh, kind of set back in, in in my own lane. You know, I really wasn't what everybody else was doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of like, I'm gonna do what I want to do. You feel me? This is what y'all doing is not for me. You know what I'm saying? So like everybody out there hustling, selling dope. You know what I'm saying? You know I was coming up in the 80s and 90s. Everybody selling dope and shit. You feel me? That wasn't my thing. I'm not standing on the corner fucking spitting out raw. I'm not doing that shit. You feel me? I want this fast cash that's not going to draw the attention on me. You feel me? So, you know, I dipped into other angles, you know what I'm saying, of the game to get my money and shit a little quicker, you know what I'm saying, more on the kind and, and, and shit level. You feel me? <clears throat> um, so you grew up in the Bay in the 80s? Yeah. What was it like? I mean, was it was it wild? I mean, this is like the crack era, I mean, right? yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I mean... I was young, so it was like I wasn't really paying attention too much, you know what I'm saying, versus as, you know, you get older and really get into the streets or understanding what's going on around you, you know what I'm saying? Once you start understanding what's going on around you, then you're able to ask more questions and pick up more game, you feel me? But just like, you know, as a little kid running around there and shit, you just see motherfuckers doing shit and you just told them to mind your business, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> go on, youngster, go to school, mind your business, say for you, you feel me? So, you know, you got to respect that, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cause it's a lot of cats, man, that's just still out there doing dumb shit at my age that was doing as a kid. You know what I'm saying? But you're still getting the same uh, uh, results and, and consequences. You feel me? So it's like sometimes that shit don't be adding up, bro. Were you rapping at this time? Nah, nah. Well, I, honestly, I started, I wasn't really rapping like that. Um, I started writing raps like when I was like 13. You feel me? But I wasn't, I wasn't doing nothing. I didn't start taking this shit serious, bro, to like 2010, something like that. Like 2010, bro, like, because a lot of shit, there's a lot of shit in this music that I don't like, that I don't agree with, you know what I'm saying? But up in that time, I was too busy in the streets, you know what I'm saying, pimping and, and, and shit, and I ain't had time to be dealing with this bitch and then worrying about going to the studio or writing a song, you feel me? So then, but then at that time, that was around the time I came out with my first Art of Ism album. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it one last shot. You feel me? And if I can get my name and people know me <clears throat> off this shit, I'll, I'll keep riding. But if not, fuck this rap shit. <laughs> you feel me? So it's like I got, I got to start getting a little notoriety and shit. You know what I'm saying? From that one. And then I just start dropping a little shit afterwards, projects after the fact. You feel me? So right now I'm on that Art of Ism 2. You feel me? It's better than the first one. You feel me? But I'm I'm at a pace now to where, you know what I'm saying, I'm 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 cool to where it's like I'll stay with it. You know what I'm saying? I start I, I see progress. So I'll stay with it. You know what I mean? Growing up in Richmond, I think you mentioned you had it rough or you know, you got in some trouble. Yeah, I mean every, every, every kid get in trouble, you know what I'm saying? Uh it wasn't nothing too bad, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't bad like that, you feel me? Um I kinda like I said, I kinda I wasn't one to run with the crowd. So, you know, I kinda off to the side, and I, I hang with a chosen few. You feel me? But it's like, I've always been the one, I'm gonna do my own thing. I don't care what y'all talking about. You know, I'm gonna do me. What was high school like for you? Bitches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it was all right. You know what I'm saying? I made it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was, it was cool. Like I said, I can't complain about none of my life, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been blessed. You feel me? Uh, I did penitentiary stints. And ain't that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm still here. I'm still living. You feel me? Uh, I'm free. So, I mean, that's that's all I can really ask for. You feel me? At this at this time. You know what I mean? So, I can't complain about nothing about my past. You know what I'm saying? No no, no complaints, no regrets. Did you graduate? Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. So, you, you know, you graduate high school and what do you do? Do you get a job? Uh, no, no, no. I went to uh, I went to junior college to play football. I okay. went to... Um, I went to Solano College out there in Fairfield, played football. Um, first year, we had a losing season. And I split. <laughs> I said, fuck this shit. I ain't with this losing shit. You know what I'm saying? So then I just, I don't know what the fuck I did. I, yeah, I started acting about, I, I ended up uh, going to the penitentiary after that. Okay, can you talk about what you got busted for? Um, that first time, I got popped for a robbery that time. You feel me? Um, 
then after that, my stitch after that was like fraud shit. So you, okay, you get busted for robbery? Uh, this, like This is like 97. Like an armed robbery or? Yeah, yeah armed robbery. It was like 97. You know what I'm saying? So How they, much time were you facing? They, they, they only gave me three years for that. So like, it was like back then, you know, it was three years and a half. Just, I did like 20 months or some shit like that. You feel me? Uh, first time in San Quentin, you feel me? But it's like, I wasn't even, I wasn't even tripping. You feel me? You were like, okay, this is another place, <laughs> you know? So it was like, you know, you got some young cats in there, you know, they hear these stories and all that bullshit, but it was like, I went, I felt I had, to, I was young, so I had to prove a point. And it wasn't with the inmates, it was with the police. Like, I'm in here, I'm young, but don't come fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? We not gonna play that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I gained my respect, you know what I'm saying? My, like, you know, be young, but leave me alone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so I, I, I ain't really even have no problems, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't have problems where I go, man, because of my demeanor and my personality. I don't, I don't start no shit. I ain't looking for no shit. But if it come my way, we can deal with it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a cool, like, I'm a player, man. You feel me? Like, we ain't, I ain't about no, you know what I'm saying? Violence and, 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 and all that bullshit. You feel me? Let's talk about how I get some money and this is then the third and everything will be fine. So, you know, if you ain't looking for no extra shit, you won't get the extra shit. So you didn't really get in any trouble when you were there? You were just kind of just minded your business? I mean, in, 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 in the joint, you, you, you getting some. You getting some, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't nothing to where, you know, I, I ain't catch no extra time. You feel me? So if I did catch a, a write-up or something, you know what I'm saying? I was cool for that little 90 days, you know what I'm saying? To where they get my time back, you feel me? So I was like, it is what it is. You're going to get into something. Because some shit can't be avoided. You know what I'm saying? Come some shit can't be avoided. It depends on what, what prison you in. Depends on the level of pettiness they is. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't been this bullshit, petty shit before. Then I didn't been in this shit where it's like, you know, motherfucker ain't even tripping. You know what I mean? I didn't been to California and Nevada. So it's like, I used to tell people, man, Nevada hella petty. I couldn't wait to come back to California. You feel me? But on the flip side of it, you could buy everything off the canteen in Nevada that you can get from the 7-Eleven up the street except alcohol. Huh. You feel me? Versus okay. California. And you going to the store once a week. Or every day versus California, that once a month shit, and then you get you limited to this, that. You know what I'm saying? We was buying ice chests, ice cream, hot pizzas, buckets of chicken, soft serve, everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pillows, you feel me? So it was like, you know, it, it was it was more uh, comfortable. It was more comfortable. And sometimes that could be an issue. When, you, when you're too comfortable, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to change. You feel me? So it's like I had a problem with that revolving door for a while until I made up my mind. Like, man, I'm done with this shit, man. This shit, this shit ain't cool, bro. Like, okay, you get out of jail, right? For the robbery, right? And what do you do from there? Uh, I go back five weeks later. Five weeks. Five weeks later for a fraud case. Well, this is uh, so. This is like ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah, I get out. I get out. Uh, I get out May of ninety. I get out May of ninety nine. And I go back August of 99, I think, or June, yeah. June, no, June, June, excuse me, June of 99. And then uh, I get out. Is this like a credit card fraud? Uh, checks and shit. Okay. I, I was making checks and shit, you feel me? Uh, I get out August 2000. Well, this, is this time, is this a Fed case or is this? No, nah, it was all state. It was all state. Still state. Yeah, it was all still state. Did they send you back to San Quentin? Yeah, I, I caught a new beef. Yeah. Were you on parole, though, too, yeah, at the same yeah. time? I said five weeks later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I come out of, I get paroled out of Jamestown, May of 99. I go back uh, 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 June of 99. <clears throat> I get out of Salinas Valley, August of 2000. Then I go back to jail October 5th of 2000. Okay. And I don't come home till October 26, 2002. What was the last one for? Same shit. Fraud? Yep. Checks yep. again? Yep. Me being me being greedy, me being greedy and not thinking because I knew what I was supposed to be doing. But it was like I'm coming home, man, like man, I need some money. Woo woo. So it's like I just jump back in the shit, not understanding and realizing that you've been gone, so certain things change. Certain things update. And I wasn't doing that shit, so it was like I'm sitting here with my printers and shit, bro. I ain't know nothing about no magnetic ink. 
I just knew about regular ink, right? <laughs> and then I had to get some game, you know, because I sit there and milk the, uh, the the store people and all that shit for just information, just on regular conversation. You feel what I'm saying? And like, this is magnetic ink that I got. So I had to switch the reels on that one, though. You feel me? So once I got up on that magnetic ink game, I wasn't going back to jail. <laughs> you feel me? And I started rolling. Well, what, take me through. What's the process for, for creating some fake check? Um... First, you gotta have a check. Okay. You feel me? You gotta. Okay. Let's let me say an example. Okay. So, say you at work, right? So I catch you on payday, right? And I say, hey, bro, check this out. Uh, I say I'm gonna give you twenty dollars, right? Let me take a picture of your check or, or or photocopy it or something. You feel me? You gonna get your check back? I just want to take a picture of it, right? So I do that, and uh. Y'all don't do this at home now. <laughs> you going to jail. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, I, would, I would get a check and then I would contact a check company, right? That makes checks. And so I would send them a copy of the information. So they would send me a box of checks with the, the numbers, the name of the company, and everything. All I got to do is get the check program which was a uh, versa check back then you know and some came with blank checks but i would order the shit the business i was only doing business you feel me i would order them i'll print them up get me a signature stamp to match the signature that was on the original and it's off to the races you feel me hit these casinos find people that want to make a little couple extra dollars hey man you gotta do, bust these checks man i give you X amount of dollars, depending on how the check was. It was like 300, 400, and I get you $100 each one. You feel me? Depends on what it was. So, everybody, I was going to the grocery stores. Uh, so, these are all payday checks? No, nah, these is all uh, work checks. Work checks. Yeah. Payday or, checks. Or, yeah. or, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, um, store refund, like, my last time when I, my last bill I did, right and that was from 2003 to 2005 right i did that bid in nevada right but do you remember um you remember when they had got shocks i don't okay got shocks they used to um give you a check if you didn't have no receipt a lot of people back then used to give you a check if you didn't have no receipt for your for your product oh okay. when you return it right so then i would bust them but then well, i'll be hitting it for like a thousand dollars you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> all Oliver Reno tearing shit up. You feel me? You know, so when I finally did get nabbed, I had a nice bank put up, you know what I'm saying, that I was going to be straight, you know what I'm saying, going to do this little bid. How much do you think you were making in, like, the height of all this? I ain't know, bro, be honest with you, because, like, at that age, when I was getting it, I was just fucking it off. You feel me? I get it, I gamble it, I, you know. But like, if I'm going in there, in these grocery stores, going around town for a thousand bucks, like I have to spend like a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Ten percent, I get nine hundred back. So it's like I'm busting them a couple a day. You know what I mean? Depending on where it's at, I might bust some small ones. If I got a couple of runners to bust some three hundred dollars ones, we hit the liquor stores and all that type of shit. Whoever casting checks, whoever casting checks becomes a victim. I don't care. You feel me? Um, it would be like that, or if we found blank checks. I mean, whatever, whatever was a check, bro. Like, it got to the point where motherfuckers would ask me, like, they would bring me to, like, bro, would this work? When I finally got off the ground, like, man, I don't fuck with it no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't, uh, I don't play that game no more. <laughs> you feel me? I don't play that game no more, man. It's the, the times have changed. It's not worth it. You feel me? It's not worth it. And, and uh, uh, technical shit has changed. You feel me? It's not as easy as what it used to be. Because once you got people saturating stuff and taking advantage of shit or fucking off, it's not going to be the same no more. You know what I mean? So I, a lot of shit, I sit back and I'll be watching people like, it's, the, it's 2020, whatever. Y'all still doing that shit? So when I be seeing people on the news get hooked up for check fraud and all that type of shit, that shit be like, damn, y'all still doing that? <laughs> you don't know see that shit hella old. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> so it's like there's no that's why I say what was going on shit will always come back around and then people will always assume things are new. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. Everything that's being done has been done before by somebody. Mm. And so when people don't understand that, 
They think that they can just go do this and it's going to work out. A lot of times it don't. You know what I mean? So it's like, like I said, man, I've learned how to sit back and stay in my own lane. You feel me? And do my own thing. And, and, and I had to get up out that lane because that lane was giving me too much time. How did you learn how to do this? Watching the news. Just well, watching it, okay, the news? The way, I, the way I got into it at first, I was 13. I was uh, watching the news. And it was a person that had got caught. I don't know if they got caught or not, but back when they was doing the um, empty envelope scam in the ATM, right? This was about 93, yeah, 93, 94, something like that. You know, you put the uh, empty envelope into the ATM machine, you can kick out some money. You feel me? Because they think there's something in there. So I seen that. I told my daddy, I was like, man, I want to go open up a bank account. You feel me? He ain't doing nothing. You feel me? Went down, opened up a bank account, man. I peeled their ass for 900 the first time. Then my pops found out. No. <laughs> so I had to kill the thing. But I'm like, okay. So then I just start opening up um, what they call like minor accounts, like student check-ins and shit. So I would go open that shit up just to get the checkbooks. Write the check, man, like I'm writing a letter. Everywhere in the malls, buying up shit, buying my nigga shit. You feel me? Just like, you know, fucking off. And then it just end up escalating. You feel me? It even got to the point to where, bro, like, I own my own slider machine. You feel me? Blank cards. I can just do anything, bro. You feel me? I could just do anything. And it was just like, it, 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 it was addictive. That, that type of life was very addictive. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's like, I'm kind of glad I got out when I did. Because over time, if I'd have kept doing that shit, man, who, who knows what kind of time, you know what I'm saying? Because I just started getting better and, and turning it up a notch every time to where the judge would even tell me, he's like, man, your crimes is too sophisticated for your age. You feel me? There's no way in hell, even being 18, 19, 20, that type of uh, know-how, you know what I'm saying, with the banking and, 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 and fraud and shit like that, like, that's some real grown folks shit, you know what I'm saying? But that go back to I want to be in my own thing. I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. So I was either doing that or I was selling slum, slum jewelry. You know? Slum jewelry, what's that? Fake jewelry, junk jewelry. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Okay, now, man, you're making all this money, you're doing this check fraud, you've right. been doing it, it sounds like, for right. a long time, right. and eventually you get caught. Right. How did you end up getting caught? Um, by not having that magnetic ink. What's magnetic ink? Magnetic ink is the, the ink that's actually on checks, any type of check, because they run it through a magnetic ink reader. That, that thing that they just put the check in and slide around. That's okay. the reader, so they can, it can come up on the screen and see what it is. So when it's not magnetic ink, that means they got to do shit manual. When they got to do shit manual, you know, then they might want to check on it. And then they'll call and see if the account's still active. You know, last time I, I got popped, it was in the casino. But the cool thing about it is they let me go because they couldn't verify it because it was after 5 o'clock. They couldn't verify it. <laughs> they got me at the cash cage and everything, right? They couldn't verify that shit, so they let me go. But what ended up happening, they, they had to shit in my room. So at that time, um, as somebody went up to get my shit, right? Came back. This was like days later, though. Came back to get my shit from the front desk. I guess they alerted the police that somebody was there to pick up the stuff, right? And then they followed them back to where I was at. You know what I'm saying? The hotel I was in. And shit. So then when I just come to the VIP, the, not VIP, but to the valet to meet the person, you know what I'm saying? They drew down on me in the, in the parking lot. We was at, uh, we was in Reno. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's when you got busted in Nevada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You feel me? So okay. I was like, man. <laughs> I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> but I still came home, no cap, bro. After that bit, I wasn't done. I still came home striking, but I had enough game, though, 
on how to do this shit right. So that's when I start hiring runners. You feel me? I was like, man, fuck this shit. I'm not putting myself out there no more like that. You know what I'm saying? That was just some young, dumb, trying to hurry up and get the shit done type shit. You feel me? Because I don't really fuck with no, nobody like that. So it's like I ain't got a whole bunch of people that, that was willing to partake in that type shit. You feel me? And I don't be liking everybody in my business. So it's like, eh, you know. Uh, but at that time, I was like, man, fuck this shit, man. I'm finding out who got an ID, who want to make some money. <laughs> you know, it's a whole bunch of motherfucking starving ass bitches out there that's just trying to find a way to take care of their kids and this, that, and the third. Niggas trying to do this and that to oppress somebody. You feel me? But, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's how we got it done, Jack. And you eventually quit. Yeah, I eventually quit, man. I eventually quit, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to put the, uh, put that shit back down. And I always told myself, man, like, if I would have never got back on that or just, you know what I'm saying, kept it playing and was fucking with bitches and shit, you know, maybe that shit wouldn't have happened. But at the same time, like, I'm a hustler, man. I'm trying to touch everything moving. Only thing I don't do is sell dope. I don't sell no crack. I don't sell no dope. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to be running from the police with that. Fat nigga, I ain't running nowhere. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, hey, man, that was, it wasn't for me, man. You know, I like to kick back and kick my feet up. You feel me? Yeah. Okay. All right. And you decided to get into rapping, started to take it serious. Yeah, I started to take it serious. You know what I'm saying? I was writing raps and doing all that shit back then, but I decided to finally take it serious. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, like, only reason I rap, bro, because I talk shit. You feel me? So I was like, I got my name, Mr. Talk That Shit. If I didn't, if I didn't talk shit, I wouldn't rap. Because I wouldn't have nothing to say. You feel me? So as long as I got something to say, I'm going to keep on putting it on the beat. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's what I like to do. That's how I express myself. That's how I get my point across. You feel me? Because that's me. You feel me? So it's like, even coming up, if you didn't know me, you might have took it maybe the way I say something or whatever as offensive. But if you did know me, person was like, man, he don't mean like he ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? That's just him. You feel me? I don't mean no harm. You feel me? I could be a sarcastic motherfucker, but I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no disrespect. You, you feel me? But um, people like to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? People like, people like to hear that greasy talk. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's crazy what go through people's minds and what they infatuated and attracted to mentally and what stimulates them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like what gets me going is always having something slick to say. You feel me? So once that stops... I don't know what I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Well, what are some things that you've worked on, features or anything you've done? Oh, uh, shit, man. Like like I said, I've worked with a lot of people, man. Um, we go back, you know what I'm saying? Me and 40 got a cut committed to the grit. Um, I work with uh, a few Bay Area cats, you know what I'm saying? My little bro, Be the Weeder. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, who else I work with? Um for Pooh Hefner, uh, Bottle Richmond, Nardi Crash, Bottle Richmond. Um, uh, the song with E-40, Turf Talk, was on that song, too. Um, who else? Right now, you know what I'm saying, I've been uh, fucking around with that, that that DFW, you know what I'm saying? So, there's a couple cats out there I've been, I've been really locked in with, you know what I mean? Uh, like I say, I'm not going to put you on a song or even ask for you to get on a song if I'm not feeling you or if I don't hear you on that song <clears throat> I won't ask because that's the only way I get a feature I got to hear you on that particular song you know what I'm saying any song I do like like when I fuck with my bro Jay Diggs <clears throat> I only shoot him a song that I hear him on and both of them be the lit the two songs that we even did together one on each album on these art isms it be the lick you feel me so it's like you have to be able to compliment me or I have to be able to compliment your style for us to work together. You know, so for me to come out. Now, I'll work with anybody that come to me, you know what I'm saying, if you want this work. But for me to reach out, I got to hear you. I got to, you know, we got to be able to be relatable and connect on that shit. You feel me? So it's like you're not going to hear me with a... I'll just say you're not going to hear me with a Mozzie style artist because that's, that's not my lane. I'm not going to jump from talking about this game and this money and these bitches to talking about, 
uh, sliding on niggas, shooting up ops, and doing all this shit that I ain't never partaked in. That's not my get down. You feel me? Uh, so it's just like, yeah, man, we got to. It's, it's, it's been a, it's a few cats out there, though. You know what I'm saying? Some of them still pushing, some of them not. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm I'm still rolling, man. And I, and I kind of keep the dudes that, that I've been working with because I see they still rolling. So I kind of use that as, as my motivation and encouragement for me to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, once these dudes stop, then it's like, okay, well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like I can hold a, a shit, an album down by myself with no features. You feel me? But it's at the same time, it's like people want to hear other people. I ain't no J. Cole. You feel me? You know? So it's like, I'm going to have... You rap about pimping a lot? Hmm? You rap about pimping a lot? Yeah, I mean, I, I rap about a little bit of everything. That's why I say, like, my albums, you got a little something for everybody on there. You know what I'm saying? Um, these are the ism projects, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They've been a lot about the game. You know what I'm saying? Um, but there's a couple... Songs and like I got that uh, I got that song Steppin'. That was the first single I dropped in the video I dropped to this album, right? It mixed the pimping with the gangster shit. You feel me? So it's like people can relate if you're not, you know, because everybody don't want to hear about the ism because that's not their lane. They don't want to hear about that shit. You know what I'm saying? But then some people do. But then some people don't want to hear all that gangbang shit either. Like I don't want to hear all that shit. You feel me? So if I slap somebody in my deck, man, we gonna talk about something I can, you know, say a mile to or, or, you know what I'm saying, have a drink to or, you know, have a good time, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying, some 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 non-contact, everybody still living type shit. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So, you know, because, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, bro. I'm not trying to put out any negative energy that's going to get me a negative response. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because once you spit that shit and people hear that shit. You're going to get tested with that shit. Is you really about that life? Or is you just spitting this shit on wax? Is you really a gangster? You really ride around with choppers and this and that? Or are you just doing that shit to sound good? Half these cats just saying that shit to sound good. You know what I'm saying? For likes and views and shit, you feel me? But then the other half, they really with that shit. Them is the ones that's getting killed. Them is the ones that's catching these cases. You know what I'm saying? But if you're talking all this high power shit, man, and you ain't never been to the penitentiary, fuck being in jail. If you ain't never been to the penitentiary and walked that main line, I can't really believe that shit you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Because all the, the gangsters and the killers, the real ones, they didn't did a bid. Or they up there right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got smart gangsters, but it's very, it's very few that don't catch time. Because they in that lifestyle and they feel at some point in time they got to prove themselves. They got to prove their gangster card or, or whatever the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? To make motherfuckers know, yeah, this is... This is really him. You feel me? So, I mean, sometimes when you talk that shit, you got to be about that shit because you're going to get, you know, you're going to get your ship card, your, your, your car pulled, you know? And if you're not, if you fail that pulling, then it could be a whole something different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you got to really watch what comes out your mouth, what you say, you know, because a motherfucker like me, I watch interviews and I, and I listen to people's songs and I hear what's coming out their mouth and I create my own judgment on the individual based on what he says or based on their music. You know what I mean? I was like, man, this motherfucker full of shit. You know what I'm saying? And then what I noticed a lot, man, a lot of these motherfuckers, man, you know, uh, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't do the name dropping this shit, you feel me? But a lot of these motherfuckers, man, I see they going viral, right? But they going viral behind corny ass shit or they going viral just because they doing some extra ass shit. And I just be sitting there like, if this is what you got to do to go viral, I'm cool. If this is what you got to do to be on the radar and get this interview, that interview, or get this person on your team, I'm just not with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not with the extras. I'm not with, you know, uh, being, the music is entertainment, but I'm, I don't want to be the entertainment to somebody to where they're getting a, a bad taste in their mouth or just laughing at you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but I, 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 see, a, I see a lot of that going on. That kind of like, you know, to each his own. You know what I'm saying? It's a different generation now. You know what I'm saying? To each his own. You feel me? Everybody wants the fame. You know? Um, give me yeah, the dollars. Yeah, dudes will do anything to go viral. Right. They will. They will. And everything ain't for the camera either. 
You feel me? A lot of people feel like they, they do this and that, but you got to put everything on camera. You only put it on camera because you want people to see it and you want people to believe it. So it's like if I'm, if I'm out here like, okay, when I shot a video, I shot a, a video called Making Out, right? And make, make it out. And I did that kind of in a, um, a homeless territory, right? And, you know, I passed out waters and all that shit, right? Now, if I wasn't shooting no video and I would have just pulled up in that area and passed out shit, I'm not going to put that shit on camera. I'm not going to have them, hey, film me uh, uh, passing out these waters to the homeless or film me giving this shit out to the less fortunate. I'm not going to put that on camera, number one, because what I do for somebody else is my business. Number two, why would you want to put these people on camera at their lowest point in life? Why would you want to uh, 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 show the world, yeah, this person over here, he's in this area, he's on Skid Row, or he's downtown somewhere, or wherever in your city, you know what I'm saying, that the, that the homeless people or the, the dope fiends or whatever hang out at, right? They don't want to be on camera like that, man. Would you want somebody to put you on camera at your lowest point? You down bad, you know what I'm saying? Ain't got a noodle to eat, whatever the hell. You want to be on camera for everybody to see? Uh, you feel me? So I feel like some shit should be just like, you know, if you're going to do it, do it out the goodness of your heart. But if it's truly out the goodness of your heart, man, keep put the phone down. You ain't got to show everybody your move. If you was a genuine dude, you was a genuine dude. But everything ain't for the public. Not continuously, every time you doing this, yeah, I know they say content, 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 but it's like, if you're a rapper, your thing is music. Put out the content of music. Okay, you give to the community, you help uh, the less fortunate, you help out the kids, cool. But if people know you, they know that's what you do. But you don't have to record it each and every time to put it in everybody's face. Hey, this is what I do. I give back to the community. I help the less fortunate kids. I, I, I do this. I do that. Who are you trying to prove it to? Me or yourself? Because I don't give a fuck what you do. I don't care who you passing nothing to. You ain't passing it to me. <laughs> so I don't give a damn. But if that's coming out the kindness of your heart and God put that on your heart to do that, man, just do it. You know what I'm saying? You know, but to each his own, man. That, that's, that's just me. I'm just cut from a different cloth, bro. Like, everything ain't for the public. You know what I'm saying? That's why these motherfuckers getting caught going to jail, posting all their guns, posting their crimes, doing all this stupid shit for social media. For what? Because you want to be seen. You want people to, you know, believe something that's not true or think you something that you're not. So you posting all this shit. But forgetting that the police is on Instagram, police is on Facebook, you know. I've seen it too many times. Police might not have a clue until they find your page. Then they got all the evidence they need. Killings, everything. You know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah, man. Is social media is something, you know. People, people do a lot for attention for yeah. the social media. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, to each his own, it man. It is what it is. You know, I mean, it's got its good goods and its bads. Right. You know. Right, but keep it, but keep it on the lane. Don't have to do the extras for attention. Some people do a lot of this shit for attention. Hey, look at me. Look what I'm doing. You yeah. know, instead of focusing on what you're there for, focus on your brand, you yourself, instead of all the extra shit and trying to, you know, be popular with everybody. You know. I hear you. I hear you, man. Well, man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate it, man. You know, you know, dope interview. You know, I think you got some really, really interesting story. Yeah. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I enjoyed just... learning a little bit about uh, check fraud. I never, didn't know all that stuff. Right, 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 right. I never, never did the check fraud thing. So that was pretty <laughs> dope. You know, I'm sure a lot of people watching probably... You know, I, I had mean, no idea about that, it either. Yeah, that, that was game back then, you feel me? Like I said, I, I ain't fucking with that shit no more, man. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? I ain't fucking with that shit no more, man. You know, shit, I just, it ain't, it ain't for me, man. You know what I mean? I'm in my own 
from my own angle, man. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are a lot more sophisticated now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. probably, you know, it's always like, a, you know, the criminals get a leg up. Right. Once, once the cops figure out what's going on, right. then right. they got it. Right. And then the criminals, you know what I'm saying, they find a way right. to outsmart the cops. Of course. And, you know, of course. So I still a lot of scams and stuff going on. Uh, a lot of hackers, a lot of, you know, shit that's, that's still going on, you know, black market stuff, you know, because they're always one one step ahead. Yeah. <coughs> you know? Yeah, it goes back and forth. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Well, man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you having me, bro. Definitely, man. We got to do this again sometime, man. Yeah, for sure. You feel me?